Hi, I'm Ken, and in 1993, I was the videographer and editor for an award-winning documentary named Hurricane Prepare to Survive. It was underwritten by Home Depot and aired on PBS. In it, we looked at issues around Hurricane Hugo, which slammed Charleston, South Carolina in 1989, and Hurricane Andrew, which did $25 billion damage in South Florida. I live in Florida and have a comprehensive hurricane plan, including providing backup power, having a non-perishable food supply, we've installed hurricane-rated windows on our house, and much more. Do you live in a hurricane-prone area? Then you need to prepare what FEMA calls a basic emergency supply kit. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, has published this list of items you need to buy and prepare ahead of time, a kit that is ready all the time. You also need to keep this list of additional items handy. Things that are more difficult to plan, so there are things you may wait to the last minute to prepare. Let's look at these two lists. First, the basic emergency supply list. Water, food, weather radio, flashlights and batteries, first aid kit, whistle, dust mask, duct tape, plastic sheet for shelter, moist towelettes, garbage bags and plastic ties, wrench or pliers, can opener, and local maps. Water. Basic, one gallon per person per day for seven days. This does not have to be bottled water, by the way, because that can get really expensive. Consider collapsible containers like this or special barrels designed to hold water without adding a plastic odor to them. Also, I suggest five gallons per person per day. That is the ability to store 35 gallons per person. A portable water filter is a good add and you need a way to boil water. Why do I suggest so much water? If you have a well and the power goes out, you have no water source. There can be issues with municipal water too. In my city, the utility department has backup power, but that is not everywhere and in your area they may not have that. Also, uprooted trees can damage water mains and that will take days or maybe even weeks to fix. Food. You need a seven-day supply of non-perishable food. This might be canned, boxed, freeze-dried, MREs. You also need a way to cook the food and just keep in mind that the power may be out. Don't rely on food in your refrigerator. It's going to go bad within a day of power outages, two at the most. And freezing is also bad to rely on again. Once the power goes out, you can't keep stuff frozen forever. So let's talk about each of these. First of all, canned goods. Canned goods are a good choice, just remember a few things about them. They're very high in sodium, so you probably don't want to, to depend totally on canned goods. They're heavy. They do need heat. You do want to bring these up to temperature to, to cook them. Uh, and that means you need some kind of uh, camp stove or portable stove. Don't rely on electricity. It may be out. And also plan on being able to cook outside. A gas grill on the outside is not a good choice for cooking. You have to use a lot of gas to bring water up to a boil. A second good choice is box goods. Uh, an example I have here is here's some rice. Rice is easy to cook and it's pretty nutritional. Just remember a couple of things about box goods. First of all, they're susceptible to infestation, so you need to keep them sealed. In this case, it's in a sealed box, but uh, you might also put that put your boxes of, of dried foods in uh, plastic containers. They may be low in nutritional value, and that's something to keep in mind, that you probably don't want to depend totally on box goods. Freeze-dried is really my favorite, and there are several options out there. Uh, Mountain House is a brand that a lot of people use. A lot of campers use it. They are available in individual packets. Here is lasagna with meat sauce for a uh, group of four people. They're available at camping supplies and also even at Walmart sometimes. Here's another one. This is actually one of my favorites. This is a company called Patriots. This particular pack is a 72-hour food supply for one person. And in it, it actually has three different meals. Um, so the idea is you would cook one and then make it last a few uh, meals and then cook another one. You would want to buy one packet of these for each of the people that are in your group. A couple of other favorites of mine is uh, this is by Wise. This is a seven-day food supply for one person in a packet. It has everything you need. It has three meals a day for, for seven days worth of food. And then this one is also a favorite of mine. 
Uh, this is by Emergency Essentials, and it is a three-day food supply for four people. Uh, a lot of good food in here, a lot of nutrition. The things to remember about freeze-dried is that they're easy. They, they're fairly lightweight. They have a very long shelf life. Seven, uh, 25 years is not unusual for a shelf life uh, for freeze-dried compared to five years for canned and box goods might be a year. They're high in nutrition. They're specifically designed for people for survival or for camping to give you the nutrition you need. They're fairly tasty. There are several companies that make these. They can be rehydrated um, with room temperature water, or you can use boiling water to hydrate them. They cook fairly fast. Uh, they do require water, though. Uh, the downside, they tend to be a little bit expensive, but understand, you're going to buy these one time. They're going to last for 25 years. You will only use them in case of an emergency. The last one I want to talk about is MREs, or Meals Ready to Eat. It's a military choice. Nothing easier than an MRE. Most don't require an outside heat. They come with a built-in heating pad that you can use to heat them up. They are high in nutrition. They're designed for survival for the military, so they're designed to give them all the nutrition they need for a meal. Um, they are also expensive, and they are heavy. As I mentioned earlier, one of the things you do want to have is some kind of portable stove to be able to heat water. Radio. FEMA suggests a hand crank radio with weather service channels. One of the things to remember about a hand crank radio, I read the review of one that also could charge a phone. To bring that battery from zero to full charge took cranking it for eight hours at two cranks per second. That's a lot of work. I also suggest looking at solar batteries. They're a good idea. The other thing to consider is you need at least an AM FM radio for sure. Weather service is a nice option, but unless you know how to use a weather service radio, you're going to get more information out of your local AM and FM talk radio stations. Flashlights and batteries. First of all, get rid of every flashlight you own. It isn't an LED flashlight. Uh, they use far less power and there's a lot of different types. This particular one has the ability, as you can see, to flash an SOS automatically. That's kind of a nice feature. Uh, in addition to that, uh, this particular one can break glass and do a few other things. Also consider a lantern. Consider an LED lantern because that way you get lots of light spread out and not just a flashlight type of light. You need lots of batteries. You should calculate that you will go through a set of batteries about every day or so and you should have a 30-day supply of batteries. One of the things you have to consider is how are you going to charge your cell phone? And these kind of backup batteries are really what it takes to do that. Only buy the ones that are rated at least 20,000 milliamp hours. They'll have that number 20,000 milliamp hours on them and that's what you want to rate. Anything less than that it's not going to charge the phone all the way up. One of my favorites is this one. It's a little expensive but it has a solar charger on it. It actually has a flashlight on it too. It takes all day in a bright sun to charge it up but at least that way you never run out. You can leave this out in the sun all day and then use it to charge a phone at night. First aid kit. Simply buy one that's rated by OSHA. That's going to have everything in it you need. A whistle to signal for help, something like this coach's whistle. Dusk mask, duct tape, plastic sheeting to build shelter, cover broken windows. I also suggest rope, and not just duct tape, but something stronger like Gorilla Tape. Moist towelettes, garbage bags, and plastic ties for personal sanitation. Tools. Now FEMA suggests you have a wrench so you can turn off the utilities, but the truth is, I have a meter wrench for that. But in addition to that, there's some other things you should have that aren't on the list. A knife, for example. Uh, that's Jethro Gibbs rule number nine, isn't it? One of my favorite tools is this multi-tool by Gerber. And there are a lot of multi-tools out there. But the thing I like about the, the Gerber is that you can open it with one hand. And then that way, if you've got holding something in your other hand, you can open and close this in one hand and very easily put it back in its holster. Can opener. Make sure it's a manual one because you may not have electricity. Maps. Here's the deal. If the cell phone system goes down, you will not have GPS, so you can't use the maps on your phone. In addition to that, if there's a lot of trees down or buildings down and all the signs are down, the landmarks you're used to going around with aren't going to be there or they're going to have changed. Roads that you're used to using may be blocked, so you'll want to be able to find alternate routes that maybe you're not familiar with. So both a local and a state map in your kit's a, a vital thing to have. Here's one of the handiest things in my kit, and that is, this is called a grab-and-go kit. This is put out by Wise, 
And among other things, what it has in it is it has a three day supply of food for one person, all freeze dried. And in addition to that, it has all those little items that you might need. It has a pot, has a little one burner camp stove, uh, has a flashlight, has waterproof matches, even has a deck of cards in it, and a small first aid kit, uh, some paper plates, and even a blanket. And it comes with a small supply of water, enough to cook with, not enough to, so you can't wash your hands with it, but just enough water to cook all the meals that you have. The one other feature that this kit has, which I really like a lot, is right here, this is a solar panel designed for charging a phone. The beauty of a kit like this is one person has everything you need for 72 hours. If we just absolutely had to evacuate at the last minute and just could carry only the things we could carry, each one of us grabs our kit and we're good for three days. The secondary list, these are the things that you don't necessarily prepare a long time ahead of time, but it includes meds and glasses, infant formula and diapers, pet food and water, family documents like copies of your insurance and copies of your IDs in a waterproof container or plastic bag, cash, small bills and change is advisable, an emergency reference manual, a first aid manual, Go to www.ready.gov and they have samples of that type of thing there. Sleeping bags and warm blankets, clothing, including long sleeve shirts and long pants, sturdy shoes, rain gear, gloves for warmth and work, bleach and a medicine dropper. Now, you use nine parts water to one part bleach uh, to, to make a disinfectant and that's what you can use for cleaning. If you have to purify water, it's 13 drops of bleach for every gallon of water. And that needs to be bleach with nothing in it. No, uh, no things that make it smell something other than bleach and no extra cleaners in it. It just needs to be pure bleach. A fire extinguisher, matches in a waterproof container, personal hygiene supplies, a mess kit, paper cups, plates, plastic utensils, paper towels, paper and pencil, books, games, and puzzles for your kids. And truth is, a pack of playing cards can keep me entertained for a lot of a long time but books is always a good thing to have use the link in the description to navigate to the FEMA website and also www.ready.gov to download the basic emergency supply kit and also resources I've also included links to several suppliers uh, that I've done business with these are people I've purchased from I buy mostly meals for my kit but I also buy some uh, a la carte uh, items as well, such as a number 10 can of meatballs, for instance, uh, that I can use to do some cooking if I need to, if I get tired of the ready of, if, of the ready prepared ones. Use the FEMA basic emergency supply list to start assembling your permanent kit. And it is okay if it takes time to do that. Purchase food and water containers for a few days this year and more next year and more the following year. My personal kit has enough for more than 30 days. Also consider purchasing a go kit and constantly review your secondary list. You should review both these lists and update your kits in the spring of each year before storm season to help you survive the next big hurricane.